Okay, streaming started. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ravi sir, Ramesh sir. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Professor Srinivas, SCRT Andhra Pradesh. Actually, I have to tell you about the other things. Textbooks have changed. So, I have to tell you about the math and mathematics textbook. I have to tell you about the math and textbook complete the NCRT pattern. I have to tell you about the NCRT and the mathematics textbook. I have to tell you about the కాబట్టి ఎన్నాళ్ళ నుంచి మనం ఒకటి నుంచి ఇప్పుడు సెవెంత్ స్టాండర్డ్ వరకు ఇంత ముందు ఎయిత్ స్టాండర్డ్ ప్రస్తుతం నైన్త్ టెన్త్ స్టాండర్డ్ ఫాలో అయ్యే సిస్టమ్ అంటే టీచింగ్ పెడాలజీ కానీ మెథడాలజీ కానీ స్ట్రాటజీస్ స్ట్రాటజీస్ కానీ లేదా అప్రోచ్ కానీ అసెస్మెంట్ కానీ ఎవాల్యుయేషన్ కానీ ఇవన్నీ చేంజ్ అయ్యే పరిస్థితి ఉంది ఇప్పుడు మనం ఇది వరకు ఇట్లాగా మామూలుగా ప్రాబ్లమాటిక్ అప్రోచ్ ప్రాబ్లం ఇచ్చే టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ లో అదే ఎగ్జామ్ లో ఇచ్చి ఆ అప్రోచ్ లో మనం వెళ్తే ఇప్పుడు ఇట్ విల్ నాట్ ఈల్డ్ ఎనీ రిజల్ట్ ఫర్ అస్ కాబట్టి మనం ఏం చేయాలంటే ఇప్పుడు మన అప్రోచ్ మార్చుకోవాలి ఈ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్స్ ఎట్లా చెప్పాలి మనం ఈ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్స్ చెప్పేటప్పుడు పిల్లలతో మనం ఎలా డీల్ చేయాలి ఎంత టైం స్పెండ్ చేయగల చేయగలగాలి మనం టెక్స్ట్ బుక్స్ చెప్పేటప్పుడు వీ షుడ్ లుక్ ఇన్ టు దీజ్ ఆస్పెక్ట్స్ అంటే పర్టికులర్ గా టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ లో ఇప్పుడు చాప్టర్స్ అన్ని ఉన్నాయి మనకి మామూలుగానే మనం చెప్తాం మ్యాథ్స్ ఈ చాప్టర్ ఉంది ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ రేషనల్ నెంబర్స్ మామూలుగా చెప్తాం కానీ అక్కడికి ఎక్కడ డిఫరెన్స్ ఏమిటో మనం చూడాలి ఇక్కడ కాన్సెప్చువల్ గా ఎక్కువ ఇస్తారు మనకి అక్కడ కాన్సెప్చువల్ గా మనకి తక్కువ ఉంటుంది మీరు ఎన్సీఆర్టీలో ఎన్సీఆర్టీలో కాన్సెప్చువల్ గా ఎక్కువ ఇక్కడ మనకి తక్కువ ఉంటుంది సారీ స్మాల్ కరెక్షన్ ఈ కాన్సెప్ట్ మీద బేస్డ్ అయ్యి వాళ్ళు టీచ్ చేస్తారు తర్వాత వాళ్ళు ప్రాబ్లమాటిక్ అప్రోచ్ వాళ్ళు లెస్ వాళ్ళు లెస్ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ అక్కడ ఇస్తారు మోర్ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ బయట వర్క్ చేయాల్సి వస్తుంది పిల్లలు మనకి ఇక్కడ ఏమవుతుందంటే మనకి మనం ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ లో మనం ఎక్సర్సైజ్ ఇచ్చి నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఇచ్చి మనం చేస్తుంటాం కాబట్టి మనం ఏం చేయాలంటే ఈ ప్రాబ్లమాటిక్ అప్రోచ్ మనం ఎట్లా చేయాలి దీన్ని మామూలుగా ఓ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ లో ఇచ్చిందని చేయడం కాదు రకరకాల బుక్స్ రిఫర్ చేయాలి మార్కెట్ లో ఉన్న రకరకాల బుక్స్ ఫేమస్ ఆథర్స్ బుక్స్ బియాన్ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ వెళ్ళాలి మనం టెక్స్ట్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ అన్ని బియాన్ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ లో ఆ కాన్సెప్ట్ మీద మనం వర్కౌట్ చేయించాలి డిఫరెంట్ కాన్సెప్ట్స్ మీద అది వర్క్ చేయిస్తేనే వాళ్ళు అప్లికేషన్ లెవెల్లోకి రాగలుగుతారు ఇక్కడ అప్లికేషన్ లెవెల్ అనేది చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ జనరల్ గా మామూలుగా చదివేసి వచ్చి పరీక్ష రాసేసి అట్లా వెళ్ళిపోవడం కాదు ఇక్కడ అప్రోచ్ ఇక్కడ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ నాలెడ్జ్ అప్లికేషన్ మీదే కాకుండా ఇంకా లోతుగా వాళ్ళ ఎంత వాళ్ళ సబ్జెక్ట్ డెప్త్ ఉంది అనేది మనం చెక్ చేస్తుంటాం టైం టు టైం తర్వాత అక్కడ అసెస్మెంట్ సిస్టమ్ కూడా డిఫరెంట్ గా ఉంటుంది మనకన్నా వాళ్ళ అసెస్మెంట్ సిస్టమ్ లో వాళ్ళు ప్రతిదీ వాళ్ళు సీరియస్ గా తీసుకుంటారు అంటే ఏంటి మనం నార్మల్ గా క్లాస్ వర్క్ హోమ్ వర్క్ ఇట్లాంటివన్నీ మనం నార్మల్ చెకింగ్ అవుతాయి అది కూడా వాళ్ళు పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది అసెస్మెంట్ చేసుకుంటారు ఎగ్జాంపుల్ చెప్పాలంటే సో మన మన దగ్గర వాళ్ళ దగ్గర చాలా సిస్టమ్ లో తేడా ఉంటుంది ఎన్సీఆర్టీ లో కాన్సెప్చువల్ అప్రోచ్ ఎక్కువ మన దగ్గర ప్రాబ్లమాటిక్ అప్రోచ్ ఎక్కువ మనం ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఎంతవరకు బాగా సాల్వ్ చేసాం ఎంతవరకు అప్లై చేయాలి నాలెడ్జ్ అనేది చూస్తాం వాళ్ళు కాన్సెప్ట్ ఎంత అర్థం చేసుకున్నారు ఎంత అప్లై చేశారు కాన్సెప్ట్ ఇది వాళ్ళ దగ్గర ఎక్కువ చూసేది అట్లాగే మనం పిల్లల దగ్గరికి వెళ్ళేసరికి మనం వి షుడ్ గో డౌన్ టు దైర్ లెవెల్ పిల్లలు మన క్లాస్ లో రకరకాల పిల్లలు ఉంటారు మనం చూసాం అబవ్ యావరేజ్ యావరేజ్ ఎక్సలెంట్ పిల్లలు ఉండొచ్చు బిలో యావరేజ్ ఉండొచ్చు వెరీ పూర్ ఉండొచ్చు చాలా కేటగిరీస్ ఆఫ్ పిల్లలు ఉండొచ్చు కానీ మనం ఏం చేస్తాం ఈ పిల్లలు నార్మల్ గా ట్రీట్ చేసి అందరికి ఒకేసారి చెప్తాం చదువు చెప్పేటప్పుడు కానీ తర్వాత మనం ఇండివిజువల్ గా అటెండ్ కావాలి వాళ్ళకి క్లాస్ రూమ్ టీచింగ్ లో వాళ్ళని క్యాటర్ చేయడమే కాదు టీచింగ్ చేసేప్పుడు ఎట్లా క్యాటర్ చేస్తాం ఎవరైనా డల్ ఉన్నారు వాళ్ళు అర్థం చేసుకుంటున్నారు లేదా లేదా మంచి స్టూడెంట్స్ ఉన్నారు వాళ్ళ కాన్సెప్ట్ తొందరగా వాళ్ళు పట్టుకుంటారు ఈ చూడడంతో పాటు మనం పిల్లలు వీళ్ళు ఎట్లా మిగతా పిల్లలు కూడా రెస్పాండ్ అవుతున్నారు ఇట్ షుడ్ క్యాటర్ టు ద హోల్ క్లాస్ మనం చెప్పే పాఠం అనేది మొత్తం క్లాస్ కి మంచి స్టూడెంట్స్ కని కాదు డల్ గా ఉన్న స్టూడెంట్స్ అని కాదు అందరు స్టూడెంట్స్ కి అర్థం అవ్వాలి మన పాఠం మన పర్పస్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ఏంటి లెర్నింగ్ అవుట్ కమ్ అచీవ్ చేయాలి లెర్నింగ్ అవుట్ కమ్ అచీవ్ చేయాలంటే అట్ ది ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ ద డే పాఠం అందరికీ అర్థం కావాలి ఆ పాఠం అర్థం కావాలంటే మన యాక్టివిటీస్ ప్రాపర్ గా ఉండాలి మన టీచింగ్ కాన్సెప్ట్ కరెక్ట్ గా ఉండాలి మన అప్రోచ్ కరెక్ట్ గా ఉండాలి ఇవన్నీ మనం చూసుకోవాలి దీని తగ్గట్టుగానే మనం ఇప్పుడు కొత్తగా వచ్చే మనం లైఫ్ స్కిల్స్ వచ్చాయి దాంట్లో లేకపోతే వాళ్ళ ఇంగ్లీష్ వాళ్ళ ప్రొనౌన్సియేషన్ మనం పెంచగలుగుతాం లేదా లేదా ఇంగ్లీష్ లో వాళ్ళ నాలెడ్జ్ పెంచగలుగుతాం లేదా ఇంగ్లీష్ లో అండర్స్టాండింగ్ పెంచగలుగుతాం లేదా ఇంకా
అంటే ఏంటి ఒక క్లాస్లో మనం ఒక గంటలో టీచ్ చేసే కానీ మనం త్రీ ఫోర్ అవర్స్ మనం కష్టపడితేనే మనం టీచ్ చేయగలుగుతాం క్లాస్ రూమ్కి వెళ్ళి దానికి ఎట్లా మనం అప్రోచ్ అవ్వాలి వాళ్ళకి ఎట్లా చెప్తే అర్థమవుతుంది ఎట్లాంటి యాక్టివిటీస్ ఇవ్వాలి ఎట్లా టైం మేనేజ్మెంట్ చేసుకోవాలి తర్వాత అట్ ద సేమ్ టైం దాంట్లో డెప్త్ ఎంత ఉంది కాన్సెప్ట్లో ఏ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఎంత ఈజీగా అర్థం చేసుకోగలుగుతారు ఇక్కడ ఎన్ని కాన్సెప్ట్స్ ఉన్నాయి లెసన్లో దీన్ని మనం ఎంతవరకు బాగా చేసుకోవచ్చు ఇవి కూడా మనం ఆలోచించుకోవాలి ఒక జస్ట్ పాఠం చెప్పేసి వెళ్ళిపోతే కాదు పాఠం చెప్తే పాఠం చెప్పిన దానికి ఫలితం ఎంత ఉంది లెర్నింగ్ అవుట్కమ్స్ వాళ్ళు ఎంత అచీవ్ చేశారు వాళ్ళు అది న్యూ సిచ్యువేషన్లో ఎట్లా అప్లై చేయగలుగుతున్నారు అండ్ అట్ ద సేమ్ టైం వాళ్ళు ఎట్లా వర్క్ చేస్తున్నారు క్లాస్లో క్లాస్ రూమ్ క్లాస్ క్లాస్ రూమ్ వర్క్ ఎట్లా చేస్తున్నారు క్లాస్ వర్క్ మెయింటైన్ చేస్తున్నారా ప్రాపర్గా తర్వాత హోంవర్క్ కరెక్ట్గా మెయింటైన్ చేస్తున్నారా లేదా తర్వాత స్లిప్ టెస్ట్ సడన్గా కండక్ట్ చేస్తే రాయగలుగుతారా లేదా ఏదో ఒక కాన్సెప్ట్ అడిగితే ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేయగలుగుతారు లేదా ఎక్స్ వైజ్ ఎవరైనా సరే మన టీచర్ ఎవరైనా వచ్చి లేదా ఎవరైనా క్లాస్లో మీరే ఎవరినైనా స్టూడెంట్ని అడిగితే ఓ కాన్సెప్ట్ ప్రాపర్గా ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేయగలుగుతాడా లేదా దట్ ఓన్లీ విల్ సర్వ్ అవర్ పర్పస్ అంతేగాని ఒక కాన్సెప్ట్ అడిగితే స్టూడెంట్ చెప్పలేని స్థితిలో ఉండి లేదా కన్ఫ్యూజన్లో ఉండి లేదా అయోమయ స్థితిలో ఉంటే కాన్సెప్ట్ అర్థం కాలేదని అర్థం క్లారిటీ లేదని అర్థం ఇప్పుడు మనం చేయబోయే మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ టీచింగ్లో క్లారిటీ చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఓ కాన్సెప్ట్ నేర్చుకున్నట్టే కాన్సెప్ట్ సాలిడ్గా ఉండాలి ఆ కాన్సెప్ట్ మీద బిల్డ్ అయ్యి మనం కాన్సెప్ట్స్ నేర్పుతాం ఇప్పుడు ఏ కాన్సెప్ట్ తీసుకున్నా మనం ఒకటే చూసుకోవాలి ఇది ఎంతవరకు మనం అచీవ్ గై చేయగలుగుతాం దీనికి ఏ రకమైన యాక్టివిటీస్ ఉండాలి వాళ్ళు ఎట్లా మనం ఈ లెర్నింగ్ అవుట్కమ్ అచీవ్ చేయడానికి వాళ్ళకి ఎట్లా మనం టీచ్ చేస్తే అర్థం అవుతుంది టీచింగ్ స్ట్రాటజీ ఎట్లా ఉండాలి మనం అట్లాగే దాని మీద ఎంత టైం స్పెండ్ చేయగలిగారు క్లాస్లో ఇదంతా మనం ప్లాన్ చేసుకుని వెళ్ళాలి క్లాస్కి అంతేకాకుండా మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ అనేది ఇట్ ప్రొవైడ్ శాంపిల్స్ గో ఫర్ జాయ్ అండ్ ఫ్రిల్ షాక్ అండ్ సస్పెన్స్ వండర్ అండ్ ఎక్సైట్మెంట్ అబౌవ్ ఆల్ సెల్ఫ్ సాటిస్ఫాక్షన్ ఫుల్ఫిల్మెంట్ ఇది ఒక బేసిక్ థింగ్ మనం మైండ్లో పెట్టుకోవాలి మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ అంటే సింపుల్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ కాదు మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ అనేది ఎవ్రీ డే లైఫ్లో అప్లై చేస్తాం ఎవ్రీవేర్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ లేకుండా ఏ సైన్స్ లేదు మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ నేర్చుకోకపోతే ఏ సబ్జెక్టు చేయలేరు వాళ్ళకి తెలవాలి మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ అనేది పార్ట్ అండ్ పార్సల్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ లైఫ్ మన జీవన చర్యలో దినక్రియలో రోజు మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ ప్రతి చోట ఉపయోగిస్తాం మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ ఉపయోగించడం లేదు కాబట్టి మనం ఎవ్రీ డే డైలీ లైఫ్ యాక్టివిటీస్తో ఎక్కడ యాజ్ ఫార్ యాజ్ పాసిబుల్ కనెక్ట్ చేయాలి డైలీ లైఫ్ యాక్టివిటీస్తో డెఫినెట్గా మనం మన కాన్సెప్ట్స్ అన్ని కనెక్ట్ చేయాలి ఏదైనా కాన్సెప్ట్ లెట్ ఇట్ బి ఈక్వేషన్ అవ్వచ్చు ఏదైనా అవ్వచ్చు డైలీ లైఫ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ కనెక్ట్ చేయడం వలన వాళ్ళకి మోర్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ వస్తుంది తర్వాత వాళ్ళు ఆ యాక్టివిటీస్ని అప్లై చేయడం కూడా నేర్చుకోవాలి ఇప్పుడు మనం క్లాసులో ఇది నేర్చుకున్నాము మన డైలీ లైఫ్ యాక్టివిటీస్లో ఎక్కడ అప్లై చేస్తాం కాన్సెప్ట్ ఎట్లా అప్లై చేయగలుగుతాం ఎట్లా చేయాలి ఎందుకు చేయాలి ఈ క్లారిటీ అంతా వాళ్ళకి రావాలంటే దాని మీద ఒక మంచి అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఉండాలి ఇది ఒక మ్యా ఇది ఒక పెద్ద ప్రయత్నం కింద మనం చేయాలి అంతేగాని ఏదో క్లాస్కి వెళ్ళాం చెప్పాం వచ్చామని కాదు చాలామంది చాలా ఎఫర్ట్ తీసుకుంటారు మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ చెప్పడంలో మనం చాలా ఇంట్రెస్ట్ చూపెడతాం మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ టీచర్స్ కింద మనకి చాలా సబ్జెక్ట్ టీచ్ చేయడం చాలా ఇష్టంగా ఉంటుంది పిల్లలందరికీ రావాలని టీచ్ చేస్తాం మనం ఇంకా ఎఫర్ట్స్ పెట్టి మన పిల్లల్ని గ్లోబల్ సిటిజన్స్ కింద చేయాలి అది మన బేసిక్ ఐడియా ఏంటంటే మనం గ్లోబల్ లెవెల్లో కంప్లీట్ అవ్వాలి మన చిల్డ్రన్ మన పిల్లలు నాట్ ఓన్లీ ఇండియాలోనే కాదు ఎన్ఐటీలు ఐఐటీలు ట్రిపుల్ ఐటీలు ఇవే కాదు ఇక్కడ ఆర్ఐఈలు ఇట్లాంటివే కాదు గ్లోబల్ లెవెల్లో పెద్ద పెద్ద కాలేజీల్లో వాళ్ళు కంప్లీట్ అవ్వాలి పెద్ద పెద్ద ఉద్యోగాలు పోటీ పడగలగాలి దీన్ని పోటీ పడగలగాలన్నా మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ అనేది బేసిస్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ లేకుండా ఏ సబ్జెక్ట్ ఏ బ్రాంచ్ లేదు మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ బాగా వస్తే ఏ సబ్జెక్ట్ అనేది చేయగలుగుతారు మనం ఈ కాన్సెప్ట్ పిల్లలు చెప్పాలి ఇప్పుడు మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ లైఫ్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ నేర్చుకోవడం ఒక ఫన్ జాయ్ అండ్ థ్రిల్ నేను ఇందాక చెప్పినట్టుగా ఇది జాయ్ అండ్ థ్రిల్ షాక్ అండ్ సస్మెంట్స్ ఒకసారి ఇట్లా కూడా అవుతుందా కొన్ని పాలసీస్ చూపెట్టచ్చు మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ ఇట్లా అవుతుందా కానీ అది మనం ప్రూవ్ చేయొచ్చు రాంగ్ అని కూడా ఇట్లా మనం డైవర్జెంట్ వ్యూస్ ఇవ్వాలి మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ ఇది ఇట్లా చే రకరకాలు ఉన్నాయి మ్యాథమెటిక్స్లో మనకి మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ అనేది చాలా వాస్ట్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ అనేది చాలా పెద్ద సబ్జెక్టు సో నేర్చుకోవడం చాలా ఈజీ చాలా ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ సో మనం సబ్జెక్ట్ పట్ల ఇంట్రెస్ట్ క్రియేట్ చేయాలి అట్ ద సేమ్ టైం వాళ్ళలో అది అప్లై కాన్సెప్ట్ నేర్చుకుని అప్లై చేయగలిగే కెపాసిటీ పెంచగలగాలి బేసిక్ ఎయిమ్స్
సతీష్ గారు ఏమైనా మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ టీచర్స్ ఉద్దేశించి ఏదైనా మాట్లాడమనండి ఓకే సతీష్ గారు నమస్తే అండి సతీష్ గారు సతీష్ గారు వినగలుగుతారా అండి సతీష్ బాబు గారు గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ మధుబాబు గారు వెల్కమ్ సార్ హలో సార్ వినబడుతుంది చెప్పండి గో హెడ్ ప్లీజ్ డాక్టర్ మధు సార్ వెల్కమ్ సార్ హలో డాక్టర్ మధు సార్ వెల్కమ్ సార్ ఐఎమ్ ఆడిబుల్ వెరీ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఐఎమ్ ఆడిబుల్ రవి గారు ప్రొసీడ్ ఆన్ మొదలెట్ట ఆన్ హలో రవి గారు ప్రొసీడ్ ఆన్ అండి రమేష్ సార్ లెట్ రమేష్ గారు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ మిస్టర్ మధు గారు ఓకే థాంక్ యూ సార్ రమేష్ గారు రవి గారు సార్ మధు సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఐఎమ్ ఆడిబుల్ Sir, there are nearly 3,400 mathematics teachers in this webinar, sir. Remaining teachers also joining in this webinar, sir. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, Rashtra Mnohonna Mathematics Teachers, Andhra Kee Kooda Namaskar Ondi. Anamu, Vijja Samsara Ndinkki, NCRT, CBSC Selbus Ni, NCRT Textbooks Dwara, Mana Atha, Iri Eighth Class Lo Implement Chai Bhootu Namu. ఇందులో భాగంగా మనము ప్రతి సబ్జెక్ట్ కి మనకి స్టేట్ లెవెల్లో కోఆర్డినేటర్ నియమితులు అయ్యారు మన మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ కి అయితే మనకి కేసరాజ్ శ్రీనివాస్ గారు ఎస్ఈఆర్టి ప్రొఫెసర్ వారు ఉన్నారు మన కోఆర్డినేటర్ గా ఇప్పుడు ఈ రోజు ఈ ఈ వెబినార్ ఉద్దేశించి టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ మీద మాట్లాడడానికి వే హ్యావ్ డాక్టర్ మధు ఫ్రమ్ ఆర్ఈ మైసూర్ um he is working as assistant professor in mathematics since 2013 so uh, he is handling real real analysis complex analysis topology differential geometry uh, uh, like different uh, branches in mathematics he is a coordinator of various uh, teacher training programs uh, at national level um uh, so uh, under the guidance of dr r rangarajan Uh, on structure theory of smooth uh, smooth lie algebra bundles an it went occur to faculty man ki roz dorakadam chaala adrushtam now uh, I, i welcome dr madhu garu please start your session madhu sir please take over Good morning to everyone. Am I audible? No, yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. okay. So, uh, sorry for uh, coming late. I was uh, actually slight. Uh, Madhu, sir, uh, please yesterday. take our session, sir. Yeah. Yesterday, I was on uh, traveling and I was, when Sri Devi Madam called me and asked about this session, uh, I was, uh, I thought I will reach early, yesterday, uh, very early, so I can uh, be here. little more ready for that one but uh, what happened uh, yesterday we came very late but uh, since it is 11 o'clock there is no issue and i am happy to uh, interact with you uh, teachers of ap uh, especially today uh, as per what sir was telling uh, we are concentrating on class 8 mathematics teaching so there are uh, if you are start teaching uh, discussing about mathematics in teaching it any class there are so many concerns are there and uh, the biggest problem for teaching mathematics is everybody consider mathematics as a difficult subject i think uh, those who are sitting here as teachers may not agree with that one but in a general uh, public is uh, they feel that mathematics is not everyone's cup of tea i hope you agree with that you might have heard this argument from many people also they may be usually tell that uh, mathematics is not uh, suitable for me i am not good in maths i am not good in numbers like that they used to tell so uh, majority of the students also develop this kind of attitude that mathematics is a difficult subject 
it, they cannot learn mathematics they cannot study mathematics and such a student when we are trying to handle there will be lot of issues will be there for such in the classroom okay you, at a, okay one more thing i want to tell is at any point if you have want to tell something you can uh, top me and uh, we can have discussion also one second okay so this is a common belief that mathematics has some problem and as a teachers i want to listen from some of you that what problems you have observed in teaching mathematics to the students class 8 students uh, can you can anybody volunteer and tell some of the issues you are facing uh, you have observed from children side teaching mathematics what are the problems you are facing what they pointed that they have difficulty what type of difficulties they are mentioning or what you have observed even though they did not tell you what you have observed any one one or two will give five minutes time for your Dr. Madhu, yeah, sir, tell me. actually, they, I'm, this is Professor Srinivas, SCRTAP. They are not able to interact directly. Okay, 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 okay. Both okay. can actually speak here along with our IT cell experts. Okay, they can sp uh, speak with you people only. Okay, then okay, then okay. I will, I will uh, change my strategy. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I, 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 myself, I will try to tell some of the issues which we used to tell about teaching mathematics. First thing is, people feel that they uh, there is a lot of uh, logical arguments are there in math teaching of mathematics. So, once there is a lot of uh, logical arguments are there, uh, children has to develop that kind of uh, the way of logically thinking about these concepts uh, and it seems to be a difficult task for the many of the students and second one we used to tell that mathematics is a very abstract nature okay very abstract in nature uh, that you can feel that uh, you classroom what we will do is we will where small classroom also we used to tell about numbers in class one or even the pre -cla pre kg classes we start teaching them about numbers okay once even at our stage if somebody asks us what show me two or show me some four then you will be in trouble the reason is you can tell that if you have two pens you can show two papers you can show Two books you can show. You cannot show two. Because two-ness is a property which you have observed as a common thing for these uh, two books, two flowers, two pens, two uh, whatever you have seen. That is a property. So it is a, it seems to be one of the difficult tasks in handling the number, the abstractness of the number. But Another interesting feature about these numbers is uh, we say that the numbers are actually hardwired in our brain. Hardwired in the sense that suppose somebody asks you your mobile number, uh, how will you tell? You will tell that your mobile number is, uh, for, for example, if uh, somebody asks my mobile number, I will tell that 855-33-72392. Okay. This is the way I used to tell my number. Okay. Now, 
when I am telling, you might have observed that I am keeping a pattern. Okay, I am keeping a particular pattern. There, that pattern is like, if I share my screen, I hope you can see the screen. Okay, I think you can see my screen. Okay, can you screen, uh, see the plain sheet of paper? Yes, sir, we can see that. Okay, so if somebody asks number, what you will do is 855, then we will give a pause. Double three seven two three nine two. So usually we can tell, a, usually it will happen, you can interestingly observe that when you tell a phone number to your friend over the phone and you ask them to repeat, the pattern you follow and he follows may be different. What I, what I have did here is three, two, two, three. Some people will make everything two, 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 two. You can observe it. You can ask your friends about phone number. Actually, the reason is your brain is easily identifies and recognizes pattern. So I am making it pattern. To remember the things, I am making patterns. So this means, like you learn language, there is a chance that we can learn mathematics also. You see that language we learn without any difficulty. Now you see, uh, for a small child of maybe three year to four year, they start learning and first they will make some mistakes in the uh, construction of sentences, pronunciation will not be proper. But Sooner or later, they start picking up and now at the age of 10, they will speak their home language or whichever language is comfortable for them in a very uh, systematic way. Uh, I am a native of Kerala. My mother tongue is Malayalam. And I joined here in 2013. Okay. When I reached in 2013, Mysur and my daughter joined in class 1 in our school, DMS school, uh, I was little tensed how she will use language, uh, whether she will be able to communicate with the students because she has uh, not even heard a single word in uh, mean sentence. Nobody speaks to her in English, nobody in home or nearby, nobody speaks to her. And Kannada, she don't know that such a language is there, Kannada also. But what I observed is within one month, she start picking up language beautifully. Now she is very fluent in speaking Kannada, spe speaking English, even Hindi. Okay. The I, reason is there in your brain there is a uh, one is there they, they are using it. Okay, and their brain is at the developing stage. And the another thing is uh, in our brain, like pattern recognition, recognition there is a uh, Hardwire is, we'll say hardwire, to learn your language as well as mathematics. So teaching, the, the children will not have the problem that what I told is, what is two? This question will not be asked by a class three student or class two student. This question comes for a higher level where you apply more logic and we try to prove or you apply more and more logic to the your mathematics mathematics classroom or thinking thought process once you make more logical then there will be issue that you will ask what is two what is one how one plus one become two and beautifully there is a book by Terence Tao on real analysis. I hope all of our teachers have studied real analysis. And you can get this book even if your course is complete. You can just download this book from the website, uh, means uh, internet. Or you can even go to a 
some university libraries or college libraries and uh, search for this book and what he does is all this number system he develop through axioms axioms means you fix a set of rules like you are going to play a game you are going to play a game so for playing a game you will have a set of rules these set of rules are called for our case for the easier understanding i am telling they these are axioms so you will have some axioms and you will develop the number system especially natural number through axioms alone then you will start doing but this kind of thought process comes in mathematics during the 19th century this axiomatic approach they called axiomatic approach so after this axiomatic approach comes in mathematics uh, people try to prove that one plus prove i am once again i am telling prove okay not to show or anything uh, terence stafford does not prove terence stafford defines that 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 so to prove 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 it nearly took uh, 300 page proof okay using your mathematical logic depending upon mathematical logic so anyway uh, you need not get afraid with uh, the logical side but logic is it should come naturally but what we will do is uh, we will try to uh, arrange our thought process so helps in arranging thought process so i will come back to actually uh, some of you may be wondering that why this all this theoretical sides we require and i am not going to uh, explain what is in the textbook that is not uh, I, I, because all the teachers can read the textbook themselves and understand what it says uh, but there is a significant difference between the uh, a normal textbook if you take from states uh, some randomly if you pick some state textbooks and uh, go through that one it will contain lot of information procedures problems and unfortunately many of the teachers as well as students and parents also feel that this approach is good you give information you tell the procedures to do the this one and you solve problems lot of problem problems are uh, sometimes they called drill work okay what i want to tell is this method has to be changed this our ncert books especially class 8 class 7 books are actually you can say typical deviation from this complete approach i want to concentrate on that part only okay uh, remember that i am not uh, once again i will tell that i am not going to teach what is in the book because you are better than me in that way you know what is in the book you can see and read the book and understand okay now coming back to our what our discussion was there we were telling there are some issues with mathematics one is its abstractness okay second is it uses lot of logical arguments okay i was thinking some of you can add some more problems you have observed in that one and uh, if possible we will come to the your 
comments on these two things but what i told is how you avoid this or how you handle this issue so actually what is our method is you will begin with concrete objects examples activities then slowly move to abstractness okay this should be the pattern we are using in the classroom actually you can see that when you studied the your b ed courses uh, that time you might have used lot of concrete objects mathematics labs maths labs chart working model still model even games puzzles all these things you might have used in the classroom okay i will come to the puzzles once again later okay so uh, this are actually you are using your concrete objects you are using your activities and throughout this activity what you will concentrate in there will be some mathematical principle behind this whatever you are doing especially when you are using a working mo model when you are using a still model when you are playing some mathematical game you are introducing a puzzle actually all this times actually our concentration will be you are using some concrete objects or activities in which there will be underlying mathematical principle and as nowadays what is our teachers job is to really motivate the child to explore themselves explore themselves okay Uh, i will i will tell one simple example uh, you have asked the child that square some numbers okay actually you are taking two and you taught about them that how to find two square two times two is four like that three square you have they know multiplication okay sorry three square is equal to Three times three, nine, and looking at the complete multiplication squaring, you give many numbers randomly. You have given like one twenty two, one twenty four, and square it, or like that. You have made groups of the students and. ask them to observe some pattern and you ask the student what is what are your observations about squares observations about the squares of natural numbers then the students start thinking about those one they will start giving some uh, examples they are giving start telling you some particular patterns what they have observed they might have come through different 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 observations some may be correct some may be wrong okay so while doing uh, that uh, one student says that if i square odd number answer will be odd okay what is this is an observation okay now you ask the student uh, how how did you got this one then he is telling that i square 3 3 square is 9 3 is odd number 9 is odd number the question is 
okay is it sufficient to say that this statement is true always then student says that i did phi square this is 25 phi is odd 25 is odd so my statement is valid so he gives say 10 such examples okay by the time students will be happy saying that if i give 10 such examples uh, this statement will be true actually then the teachers role comes they should tell that 10 examples or 20 examples or 100 examples is not sufficient to tell this statement is always true okay so what will happen is one second sorry then teacher says another interesting thing that you have identify the pattern 2 4 6 8 and write the next number okay normally as every student even you can ask next two numbers student will tell that 10 well identify looking at the pattern but teachers answer for these numbers are different reason is the teachers general term is n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 n minus 4 plus to it this was the general term so and what will happen is a1 a1 you put one here this complete the first term will become zero to a2 this will become zero for a3 6 a4 8 but once you come for a5 things will change it will become 4 3 2 1 plus 10. so what we want to or actually this what you have done in this this question this pattern question is you have actually made the children thinking that uh, this writing the n term by looking at the pattern which they were doing in the class 1 or 2 or uh, means uh, class up to class 6 what they are doing may not work always you require something called proof what you have done is you have made a statement here by observing something and what you have done is you have verified those one for some more examples but we require a proof so now the question is how to prove this so then the question will be what is a proof actually okay when we say about proof the best 
one is when we have the national curriculum framework you remember uh, you, i don't know uh, how many of you have gone through this document national curriculum framework 2005 and it has a position paper position paper for teaching of mathematics and now uh, next ncf is on the uh, prepare, under preparation uh, and you in your earlier classes you might have come across the nep 2020 and there may be discussions happen regarding that one i am not going to the discussion of nep 2020 and uh, what i just want to tell is uh, once you read the nep document the 60 page document and you find out the uh, descriptions about mathematics teaching you can observe that uh, and once you have read this position paper of uh, 2005 ncf and nep 2020 then you will see a interesting thing that this nep 2020 about what what it say speaks about the teaching of mathematics is does not have much difference between with the, the position paper that means it is not changing the complete approach of position paper it suggests some structural changes suggests some structural changes uh, like bringing two types of mathematics in the classroom math one or advanced math and uh, such things are there which i am not going to discuss now because it will deviate our whole discussion so i will come back to the position paper what i want to tell is the uh, teaching the position paper in 2005 it uses two major thing one is it is a child centered approach what is the features of child centered approach in your whole teaching the child will be on the focusing area not assuming that actually uh, you, some of you may say that uh, what is that new how it be, become new a child is the focus area of we are teaching child so child is always on the focus area but what we want what this says is child's experiences matters okay child's experiences matters i will tell one small story about that one uh you have uh once sir was asking about in a class about uh, the selling of some buffaloes okay so uh, question was one buffalo cost uh, 2000 rupees uh, how much cost five buffaloes everybody calculated the then and got the answer 10000 but one student he was not ready to write then sir asked why you are not doing he told sir you told one buffalo cost 2000 i want to see the other buffaloes then only i can tell the price without seeing the buffalo i cannot tell the price because his father is a agricultural person he knows that without seeing the item i can i cannot tell the price that is not so this is this is a child's experience okay child's experience comes to the classroom our normal example does not work so this is one not only this one in this classroom of child centered classroom child will suggest solution give their opinion discuss with the friends discuss with the
teachers obviously the in this classroom children's voice will be more than teachers so some of you may be feeling that the class will be very much noisy the children will start shouting we cannot control the class uh, so don't take this word as a literal meaning so there is a they, they should be feel free they should feel free to tell their argument suppose you ask a uh, question to them the, every student should be able to tell their answer and justify their answer and identify their own mistake by explaining to you or from your their friends or if they everybody agrees with that one and with a wrong statement the teacher should be able to give a counter example at that time and tell that how it differs okay now coming back to the ncf this is one approach child centered approach is the focus area so in a one way it is called a constructivist classroom so uh, in that class what you are constructing not the models or teaching models or anything you are constructing the knowledge okay you are constructing the knowledge how it will you will construct the knowledge teacher will give some experiences to the students through examples models games puzzles reading material i, I reading material is very important okay puzzles i told you earlier it is important i will come to that one both reading material is very important then from there children will explore themselves explore themselves and come with some their some of their suggestions and opinion opinion then teacher will consolidate and prepare the knowledge from that one For example our previous uh, one Uh, we observed that odd numbers square of odd numbers is odd so throughout your argument you observe that odd numbers i can write as 2n plus 1 then when you take 2n plus 1 if i square that one it will be 2n square Plus two times two n times one plus one square four n square plus four n plus one whatever be that one it will be some this first part I'm going the proof little quickly children may take more time children may have so many confusions in this notations also uh, those things I am not coming this whole thing I can write it as two times k Plus one again, it is an old number. Okay, actually you can see that uh, in our NCERT textbook, this squares and square numbers comes in the uh, chapter six. I'm taking only one example from squares and squares, squares and square roots. This solution, this their proof of this what you have observed may come in the chapter 9 algebraic identities so what is the fe main feature here is actually you are using a spiral approach in the classroom you are using a spiral approach so the question which you have addressed that square of odd is odd observe it observed verified in class uh, in chapter 
proved in chapter or can be proved can be proved in chapter 9 so that is what the difference between some normal private textbooks and ncert textbooks here we use prior approach the concepts may uh, start from one class and it may be used in the other chapters also a so the biggest thing the after the ncf 2005 what in ncf 2005 you can see that uh, once you go through ncf 2005 one can see that there are why we teach mathematics this is one of the biggest question we try they try to answer in ncf 2005 why we are teaching mathematics so we will tell many things uh, they should uh, go to the market and do the calculation and people should not uh, they should learn about money uh, they should learn about uh, measurement they should uh, learn to estimate the things without mathematics you cannot do many things like so many things we will list all what we are listing there will come in narrow goals of teaching maths including getting job day to day life application all this comes under narrow goals of teaching mathematics but there is a more broader goal is there that we call as mathematization of thought process so what you want to do is your child should or not only child the future citizen we will tell the future citizens should be able to uh, their thought process should be clear systematic otherwise uh, whatever you get in whatsapp they will start sharing without thinking usually we can see that uh, people will tell send the whatsapp message and they will tell that uh, sup suppose somebody says that uh, sir what you are told is a fake message they will tell uh, share shared as it was received you have an internet you can tell uh, search its uh, genuinity but people won't do that one they will directly uh, start sending those things and uh, telling that these are the uh, these i got received so that is what not we are expecting from a future citizen or good citizen uh, or not from a human so what we expect them is they should analyze the thing they should rigorously go through it and tell whether it is logically valid or not so slowly slowly you should be able to uh, make the child's thought process mathematics this is the actually this is the whole essence of teaching mathematics so whatever you are doing your observation generalization proof or sometimes we may tell that what you observed may be wrong and it cannot be proved so uh, disprove everything is why we are doing is not for examination point of view we are doing this for your child's thought process mathematization now this keeping this whole this idea the mathematization of thought process you should go to the ncert textbooks you cannot take this ncert textbooks like any other private textbook uh, private text will will give you lot of information and lot of problems 
but you can see that ncert textbooks is not like that they give information but at the same time the approach to that information is entirely different from many other books okay for example let, let us take one example from the uh, chapter called introduction to graphs okay and what i am going to take is uh, there are different types of uh, portions are there in one portion is your linear graphs okay so what happens in linear graph is uh, what you are doing is you are just uh, the, the whole thing what you, you want to do is you have x axis you have sorry x axis and y axis you want to mark a point so you will take this distance this distance x y and its coordinate is x y this is what you want to show but you can see that there is an activity in that one what it says is teacher takes the blackboard on the blackboard teacher marks a point and name it as a ask the students to describe the point so children this you can try in the class also describe the point means children will start coming describing trying to describing the point and slowly slowly they will find that uh, we uh, to get a clear picture of where it is you should have something called a frame of reference you will tell that uh, there is a line here and there is a line here so this frame of reference from here this much distance and this much distance suppose another student take another frame of reference through this for him this is one line and this is one he can also tell this point but what will happen is its coordinate will be different now so everybody has to agree with the same frame of reference slowly slowly in that discussion children will understand the importance of axis so in that way they develop the concept of the coordinate system and axis so it will it will take a little time in the classroom it is not like directly telling that you draw x axis do you draw y axis mark the point x y uh, then you mark the point 2 3 you mark the point uh, 4 3 you mark the point minus 2 1 if you directly go that one uh, the children will may not get the idea why we are doing all the things so we try to address this question why many times in the mathematics classroom the teachers will focus on children and teachers will focus on two things what is the answer if you give a question will concentrate on what is the answer then teacher will tell that you when you are giving a homework you just should not come with answer alone you should learn how to get this answer then you will tell that okay if you are finding out you are able to explain how to get this answer then you are better than the previous one but why, according to this one why this is the only answer or why you are getting this answer okay if our ncert books focus on this part more because we we are not 
teaching them not just to solve some plenty of problems and get the high mark our focus area is mathematization of child thought process and whether the child take mathematics for higher education or not if they are able to see the problems in this way in future wherever they go they will start applying this thought process and they will be able to successful in their career whatever they are choosing or their life they are choosing so this is what the you can you have to when you are looking into the math textbook you should concentrate on this you you should try to see that our books keeps this idea so i told you that there are two things now we have with us one is we are concentrating on mathematization of thought process we are teaching maths on mainly for this one all other are its side effects or what you are getting is a by products all narrow goals are by product okay now teachers main job in the beginning i told that motivate the child so different activities you have to use in the classroom i will come back uh, tell about one more thing in the textbook that you can see that one activity in the chapter called playing with numbers okay so in that activity what they are telling is uh one student is asking about a child that choose a two digit number the student chooses some number like uh, 32 then reverse it then get another number add them so he adds them okay now he is telling that divide with 11 so the thing is there will be no remainder I'm not giving the answer but i am telling that there is no remainder the problem is uh, the children uh, will do this one with various numbers and explore themselves now this is automatically the children uh, the question should come from the child that why this happens not from the earlier when we do the um, squaring case this question was asked by teacher now the children will be curious this is the importance of applying puzzles in the classroom puzzles or activities in maths classroom so there is one chapter is completely dedicated catered for this kind of activities and uh, the answer will be when you take a number a b then student should learn that this is not just a b it is 10a plus b if you reverse you will tell it is b a it is not b a it is actually 10b plus a you are adding these two numbers it will be 11a plus 11b 11 times a plus b whatever be that one it is a multiple of 11 so this answer should come from the students by your proper motivation why this happens this question should be naturally come from the child so that is what our biggest job actually 
you can see that if you are teaching physics or chemistry or biology this why question will always come from the student side always all the things they want to know how the rainbow is formed why this rainbow has seven color when you do this one uh, i am getting this one when you are traveling in a bus you are when bus stops we are moving forward why why this question will come very naturally in that way you should be also able to make the curiosity among the child by suitably using this puzzles and activities in the classroom there are plenty of activities are there in the book you can explore them that is one thing second is going through the math book you can see that it is actually student friendly book what do you mean by student friendly it is not only by the pictures and other things uh, the language we use in ncert books are actually focusing on the book should is readable uh, remember that we will not directly give uh, okay uh, it to uh, once again i will i will go back to one more uh, example so uh, you want to tell that uh, difference of two rational numbers is a rational number uh, actually many private books what they will do is you take a rational number a another rational number b a plus b is a rational number a minus b is a rational number a times b is a rational number a by b is a rational number provided b not equal to zero all these things they will quickly give all this directly but you can see the book and it does not say give a direct one they give some examples do it yourself activities observe then generalize most of the up to class 8 this method is followed in very much you can see that one you can see this this is the method they follow in many of the uh, activities uh, book reason is by slowly slowly in when you come to the class 9 class 10 even if you give a direct formula or direct thing the child the himself or herself should be able to go through these concepts in themselves and if you give one particular formula they should also check with examples whether the formula is true for that cases then they should be able to ask the again question why like like that they should be able to answer uh, develop that mathematization process so actually mathematics textbooks are meant for reading children should be able to read the mathematics books but unfortunately many of the teachers so don't don't suggest them to read the books uh, teachers will tell that teacher will read for themselves teacher will assimilate them for themselves and teacher will start teaching them in the classroom actually you should make the children read themselves some of the results especially nowadays after the covid lockdown and online classes children have gadgets with them they will explore themselves so it is not a big issue that you can ask the children to read and come to the classroom read understand and come slowly slowly reading mathematics should be a habit for the children otherwise in future they will be facing some issues now
arithmetic arithmetic you can have rational numbers are there you can see that this rational numbers comes from the continuity of the previous classes where they have studied natural numbers integers whole numbers all the things they have studied in the earlier so here we have having rational numbers then as we have discussed squares and square roots cubes and cube roots okay then factorize and i am not writing the chapters in the their number i am putting them all under what comes under the arithmetic i am writing factorization then fifth one is uh, playing with numbers okay actually what i will suggest for a teachers tip okay this chapter should come naturally randomly you should use the ideas of this chapter okay and use anywhere wherever you require and these two chapters actually you can see that these two chapters depends lot of their children's observations and children themselves will come out with various interesting features of this chapters this is the experience of me when we used to uh, give training for the teachers as well as students we have observed these are the chapters students explore themselves very much interestingly they will explore okay these are the some of the arithmetic chapters now i will list out the geometry chapters or or algebra chapters next one is linear equations in one variable second one is algebraic expressions and identities this one actually there i will tell you there are some continuation links you can keep in this chapter when you are dealing this chapters algebraic expression and identities i told you that there is a plenty of models you can use for introducing that one models or if you have some ict tools all these things you can use and you can uh, just link them with the numbers and show them and then you can come to the identities okay then coming to the geometry when you come to the geometry there will be uh, chapters like understanding quadrilaterals are there then practical geometry is there practical geometry is a uh, use lot of uh, drawing skills they require uh, teachers can use not the students teachers can use softwares like uh, robo compass geogebra in this chapters geogebra it can be used in any of this geometry part but uh, here i will suggest robo compass also okay and third one is uh, visualizing solid shapes here also teacher can use concrete models models they can use and geogebra 3d version you can use in this and uh, mensuration problems okay Now there is a chapter which 
is a statistics chapter is there it use uh, data handling mainly actually i have skipped some chapters one is uh, i have introduction to graph is there it this chapter i told you that there are two portions are there one portion actually comes with the data handling like uh, your graphs are there one comes to geometry okay uh, i told you that there are some graphs linear graphs are there linear graphs are actually connects with uh, geometry then there are some other chapters which works like a link between the uh, arithmetic to algebra one is comparing quantities this chapter once you look into this chapter most of the things are coming from the numbers these are all majority of the things are coming with numbers but it's uh, when you want to go for its application and other things it has a link you can keep a link from this chapter to algebra okay algebra like not identity you will get algebraic expressions you can use in uh, comparing quantities another one is direct and inverse proportion this also problems will be word problems and number problems but solutions will be easy when you are doing algebra bring algebra here it will be easy not the very high level algebra class 7 algebra will work here another one chapter which i have not told is exponents and powers okay i will usually the children will ask the question i am also asking for you as an exercise problem what is different between exponent and power okay what is, why this title is like this exponents and powers you think of it and you can further you can tell later okay but this chapter they have studied some related things from the previous one actually you can link them with uh, squares and cubes and you can go for the higher level and it will directly go to the algebra section so these three chapters why i put side is it has both algebra as well as arithmetic nature actually once you come to the graph this linear graph i told you that it is in the graph the chapter introduction to graph it comes linear graphs it is connected with geometry but actually it is connected with coordinate geometry it is connected with coordinate geometry and coordinate geometry is connected with algebra so you can see that these things are interlinked that is why the chapter chapters are arranged in that way so i just give a broad picture of what is in the textbook and how it you, the teacher has to approach the, those things okay and in class lower classes what i will suggest to you is you spend plenty of time to make the children think and slowly slowly they should have the the thinking habit should come to the students naturally so this is the uh, main thing i want to tell in today's session i will stop now if some queries or anything is there we can discuss thank you thank you dr dr madhu sir i'll uh, just summarize a few things for, for the in the interest of our teacher community sir has emphasized on abstractness abstractness and logical thinking of mathematics and then uh, as per nc of 2005 the importance <coughs> of teaching mathematics why should we teach mathematics so mathematization of thought process all this he has explained and then oh, two important things about textbooks has said concentrating on mathematization of thought process motivating the child these two are very important mathematical thought should be 
improved in the students and at the same time they should be motivated to learn about it then here the textbook should be student friendly so the language used should, should be simple and the child in, should be in a position to read it so he has said the important thing at lower level is primary level secondary level 6th 7th 8th classes particularly give it do special activities observe and then generalize it they should learning by doing in fact they should give an example they should do it themselves and then observe the general pattern whatever it is and then they should generalize it so master textbooks are meant for children to read this is one important thing we should all remember our teacher community here in andhra pradesh we should encourage children to read the textbook particularly one one thing is they understand the concept and at the same time uh, the reading habit is awfully lacking in our children we should improve the reading habit in general second thing they understand the concept by going through the textbook by reading the textbook they understand the concept they will be able to explain the things that's what he emphasized they should read understand and come to the class that will help them to learn more and we will it will help us to teach more also at the same time then he has given the distribution as per the subjects also i hope we will all follow this one and make our children think thinking is very important in mathematics our professor ravindra from rajan college of education now formerly rajan college now it is rajan institute of education rim he used to emphasize on thinking only he was head of the department mathematics professor <coughs> he used to emphasize on thinking only thinking mathematics requires thinking thinking is the aspect we should be improved in children particularly while learning mathematics so we should keep these points in mind thank you very much sir for motivating our teachers uh, guiding and uh, giving suggestions to us i would also thank our um, i would also thank our honorable special chief secretary school education commissioner school education state project director samagra siksha and director scrt for uh, giving the, for providing us with this opportunity to learn i would also thank Sri Ramesh Garu, Sri Ravi Garu, IT Cell, CSC, and then the guest teachers, RPs from KVS and Navodaya who are attending this, and all our teacher fraternity for uh, making this a success. And I hope we got benefited very much through this. Last but not least, we will follow this one and make our teaching interesting and make our children also learn, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Once again, thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Or to Ravi Garu. Or to Ravi Garu. Srinivas Garu. Sir. I pay in the sir. Session complete. I pay in the. Fine, sir. Complete. Sir, thank you so much uh, for your valuable session, sir. Uh, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, more than uh, six thousand teachers uh, viewed your uh, uh, webinar, sir. Uh, it is continuous streaming, so nearly twenty to twenty-five thousand teachers definitely will watch, sir. We will send the send you the feedback uh, from the teachers uh, to your mail, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. May I leave now? Namaskar. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So over, sir. Ravi Garu, meeting is over. Ravi Garu, sir, meeting is over, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.